Thank you for choosing Woods Power Grip products to help you handle materials safely and efficiently. We've created this quick start guide to help you set up and operate the model CB2DC counterbalancer. This video is not a substitute for the counterbalancer's operating instructions. You should read and understand the entire instruction manual before using this equipment. The instructions icon indicates when the manual offers important help for each quick start step. To begin, carefully remove the shipping materials. This includes the covering, the supports, and the restraining devices. Be sure to save the supports and restraints for later transport and storage. Select a crane or other suitable hoisting equipment rated to lift at least 3,800 pounds or 1,724 kilograms. This amount includes the weight of the load, shown in instructions as the maximum load capacity, the weight of the counterbalancer, the user's supplied counterweight material, and the vacuum lifter. Make sure all your hoisting equipment, including crane, hoist, slings, and other rigging, complies with all laws or regulatory standards for your region. Make sure the lift cables provided are correctly attached to the counterbalancer. The short cable connects to the front lug using a supplied hook, and the long cable connects to the rear lug also using a supplied hook. Attach the hoisting hook to the free ends of the lift cables. Remember, make sure all restraining latches on the hooks are working to prevent the lift cables from slipping off. Once the counterbalancer has been set down on a stable surface, it's time to fill the counterweight bins. First, select the appropriate material, such as pea gravel or sandbags. Next, use the formula in the operating instructions to determine the amount of material necessary to offset the weight of the lifter and the load. Remember, do not exceed 1,200 pounds or 555 kilograms of counterweight. Make sure an equal amount of material is placed in each bin to keep the CB2DC balanced from side to side. An array of mounting plate configurations enables the counterbalancer to pair with the best vacuum lifter for a particular job. Configuration 1, for example, has a lift shackle, which allows for the use of any lifter that cannot be mounted rigidly to the counterbalancer. Configuration 2 is for older P1s and other lifters that feature a 2-inch wide lift bar. If you have a P1 with a 3-inch wide lift bar, contact Woods Power Grip for more information. Configuration 3 is for the MRTALP series and older P1s mounted upside down for reverse angle glass installation. Configuration 4 is for P2s and other lifters with 2.5 inch wide lift bars. And finally, Configuration 5 is for mounting P2s upside down for reverse angle glass installation. In order for a lifter to be mounted rigidly to the CB2, the lift bar must have correctly spaced holes. If your lifter does not have such holes, contact Woods Power Grip for more information. After you've selected the right configuration for your lifter, install mounting plates in the correct orientation and tighten them securely with four bolts, as shown here. Install the lift bar or shackle assembly in the correct order for your lifter. Tighten them securely with two bolts, as shown here. This example shows how to mount the lift shackle, configuration number one, for use with any lifter. This example shows how to mount an inverted P2 lifter using configuration number five. The counterbalancer is designed to interface with DC2 and DC3 radio ready vacuum lifters. As a result, the counterbalancer's battery powered radio transmitter can be used to activate the lifter's attach and release functions. To connect radio controls to a DC2 lifter, First, disconnect the lifter's radio receiver, if present. Then, use a control cable to connect the counterbalancer controls to the lifter's control unit. 
To connect a compatible P2 lifter, connect both lifter control cables, one to each pad channel. Be sure to secure control cables as needed to prevent them from becoming tangled, cut, or damaged during lifter operation. To connect radio controls to a DC3 lifter with IntelliGrip technology, you must install an adapter cable. First, align the control cable socket and the corresponding end of the adapter cable. Next, connect the cables and turn the locking collar clockwise to secure them. Then, insert the DC3 end of the adapter into the IntelliGrip control unit and turn the locking collar clockwise to secure it. Repeat these steps if the lifter requires a second control cable. Connect the electrical connectors between the battery, charger, and control unit, as shown here. Then, make sure to perform operational tests as directed in the counterbalancer's operating instructions. Be sure to complete all pre-flight preparations each time before using the counterbalancer. Make sure the counterbalancer is designed for the specific task you want to do. Be sure to wear the right personal protective equipment and take other precautions suitable to the job requirements. Complete all inspections and tests required by the operating instructions. Remember to check the battery energy after the counterbalancer is powered up. A drive nut maintains the position of the counterweight bins along the drive shaft. A hex head screw functions as a lock for the drive nut and needs to be checked before each lift to make sure it's tight. If it isn't, use a wrench to turn the screw clockwise. Otherwise, the counterweight may shift unexpectedly. Using the radio controls, the operator can move the counterweight bins, as well as engage the lifter's attach and release functions. For added safety and economy, the radio controls go into sleep mode automatically when they're not active. When you press any button on the radio transmitter, the transmission indicator light quickly flashes green as the transmitter wakes from its sleep mode. The use of control lines is required for the best possible handling of the counterbalancer system. Attach control lines to both holes at the rear corners of the counterweight bins. To help control rotation and pitch, connect a third control line near the front of the counterbalancer. When operating a P2 lifter in an inverted configuration, the third control line should be connected at the lift point of the lifter. Contact Woods Power Grip about using newer P1 lifters for this as well. Use additional control lines as needed when the lifter and load are suspended from a shackle. Please note that the length of the control lines vary, depending on the job requirements. Place the counterbalancer's power switch in the on position and keep it there throughout the lift. Also, power up the vacuum lifter as directed in its operating instructions. To activate the radio transmitter, press the transmitter power button and hold it briefly. The counterbalancer is designed so that its main beam remains level during the lift. Powered motion allows the counterweight to move as needed to balance the system, whether or not a load is attached. Use the radio transmitter or onboard controls to move the counterweight bins. Press and hold the counterweight forward button or counterweight reverse button as needed. A strobe light will automatically flash. Moving the bins forward will lower the front of the CB2, while moving it back will raise it. Remember, the counterweight should be moved only when the counterbalancer is suspended. To attach the lifter to a load, follow the directions in the lifter's operating instructions, except for the following. If the lifter vacuum is rigidly mounted to the counterbalancer and the load must be tilted, place the lifter slightly above the load's weight center. 
This will prevent the load from automatically tilting when a tilt latch is released. Another exception involves using an inverted lifter for reverse angle glass installation. In this case, the lifter's pad frame may be tied back to the counterbalancer's forklift pockets, allowing you to maintain the required load angle for installation. If you plan to use lifter controls to attach a load, follow the lifter's operating instructions. If you plan to use the counterbalancer's radio controls to attach a load, first make sure the transmitter is activated, then press the attach button. Place the lifter gently against the load surface until all the vacuum pads have sealed. Remember to stay in attach mode throughout the lift. Once the pads are sealed, make sure to balance the load before lifting it. Do this by raising the hoisting equipment slightly until the front end of the counterbalancer is angled downward. Then, move the counterweight bins toward the rear end until the counterbalancer picks up the load and levels off. The load can now be lifted and moved. Be sure to raise the load high enough to avoid any obstacles. Use control lines to maintain the desired orientation of the counterbalancer and load. The counterweight bins must be placed in the forwardmost position before the load is released from the lifter. Please note that radio controls will not allow a release in any other position. Be aware that failing to reposition the counterweight may result in a violent release of the load and could cause property damage or personal injury. A white light will signal when the counterweight is correctly positioned for a load release. Make sure the load is securely at rest and fully supported before releasing the vacuum pads. If you're using lifter controls, follow the lifter's operating instructions correctly. If you're using the counterbalancer's radio controls for the release, press the enable button and the release button at the same time on the transmitter. The strobe light will automatically flash. Continue to hold both buttons until the vacuum pads disengage completely from the load. Place the power switch in the off position. Note, the battery energy gauge shuts off while the counterbalancer is powered down. The radio transmitter will automatically power down after a period of inactivity. To shut it off completely, activate the emergency transmitter disconnect. Power down the vacuum lifter as directed in its operating instructions. Make sure the attached vacuum lifter is adequately suspended. Then use the hoisting equipment to gently lower the counterbalancer onto a stable support, such as the stands that were included in the original shipping materials. Remember, there may not be adequate clearance for the lifter while it is still attached to the counterbalancer. If this is the case, remove the lifter first, according to its operating instructions. To store the counterbalancer, first, remove the batteries from the radio transmitter then place the transmitter in its storage compartment. When the counterbalancer is not in use, remove all the material from the counterweight bins to minimize corrosion and ease transport. Charge the battery completely, directly before placing it into storage, and then at six month intervals. After charging, disconnect the electrical connectors to minimize battery discharge. Make sure to use the counterbalancer's original shipping supports and restraints. Now you are ready to store the counterbalancer or transport it to your next job. Be certain that you read, understand, and follow the guidance provided in the CB2's operating instructions, which includes additional information and warnings. A copy of your specific lifter's operating instructions is available for download at WPG.com. Thank you again for choosing Woods Power Grip products.